I'd like to welcome you to our March safety meeting. Uh, this is Beach Transportation, a uh, school bus company, and we're going to be talking today about field trips, um, mostly leaving the security of your bus route and going into unfamiliar territory. So let's see if we can get you going here with our PowerPoint. Okay. Okay, so we're gonna talk about um, our, our title is Off the Beaten Path. As I said, as you leave the confines of the security of your bus route, you run into obstacles and hazards that you're not used to. You have to kind of think on your feet a little bit and things just don't go as regular as you're used to on your school bus route. Now, for those of you who have done a lot of field trips, this will be just a review. It never hurts to think about what you can do better, um, where your weaknesses are, what things that you're kind of getting complacent with. And for those of you who are new, uh, there's some real important things that you have to do when you go onto a field trip roster. So let's get going here. We're going to talk about preparing for that extra trip, the work orders that go along with that, how to do the paperwork, student management when you're on a field trip, finding your way, that's pretty important. And then into the hazard zones, we'll look at the hazards of field trips or potential hazards. So preparing for an extra trip. First of all, you need to sign the availability sheet. Um, that availability sheet is by seniority and it is in the driver's lounge at the main office. Um, and it's posted there uh, usually on a Monday morning and Mitch pulls that off and, and sees who's available for the week. So come in, sign the availability sheet, let them know, let Mitch know, let Josh know when you are available to do extra trips. Um, the skills of a good field trip driver um, are basically your good driving skills but they're kind of amplified. Like I said, you're in places that you're unfamiliar with. You are dealing with passengers that you're not familiar with. So things change, but your basic driving skills are what's gonna get you safely to and from the office with your field trip. You're gonna be professional and polite. You need to be flexible because oftentimes they change their plans at the last minute or they, let's say they don't come out when they, they said they were going to. You go to pick them up and they're not there. Um, flexibility is a very good skill to have as a field trip driver. Safety minded, of course, that's the first thing on my mind is you need to drive those buses safely. You need to get them into places that are maybe tight, that are not really designed for, for school buses. And you need to say sometimes, well, I'm sorry, but I really can't go into that area. Um, there's a little bridge there. I don't know what it's rated. It's really tight. I can't get a school bus in there. Um, our dispatchers are really great. However, most of the time you are not going to be asked to go someplace that's, that's, that you're unable to go. So can you think on your feet, on your wheels? Can you grab this professional manner, this polite manner, this safety-minded uh, thought, and can you use those at kind of a moment's notice? Take that time, just a second, to reflect on what you need to do when you're asked to do something, or as you're driving, you need to react to something. 
Okay, your work orders. You're going to get a work order, and I'll show you a picture of that here in a few minutes. But that work order is going to tell you who you're going to pick up, where you're going to pick them up, what their itinerary is, so what they're going to do, and then are you going to bring them back, or is somebody else going to bring them back? Oftentimes, we look at that first page, and we think we know everything that's going on. But it's real important to look through all the pages to see if they have an itinerary with that, if there are things that you need to know, are they going to want to stop partway on their trip? So look over all the pages. Don't get complacent with that. Identify who you're taking, what they're going to do, where they're going, when they want to be picked up, um, and then how you're going to get all those little things put together to make this a successful field trip for them. What is their itinerary? Like I said, are they going to stop someplace part way? Are they um, going to go from place to place? So itinerary or what they're going to do is, is pretty important. Any other important information? Do they need a cooler? Do they need water taken? Um, we don't usually do that for field trips for those groups, but they might need you to load something. They might need space to carry equipment. So check those pages over um, really closely. So here's a picture of a work order. And we'll get into each section, but this is kind of what it looks like. Okay, the top of this has who ordered the bus. And in this place, it is Missoula County Public Schools. This is a really old work order. I've, I've used this for years and years, but um, it's still very valid. So who is going? Who's the group? So you have Chief Charlo, fourth grade. And your contact is Terry Phelan up here. Address, I mean, a phone number is not available. Usually there's a contact with a phone number. Okay, this is move one of two. This is bus one of two. So there's two buses going. Now, just because it says your bus one doesn't mean that you're the leader. That just means your name comes up quicker in the alphabet than the other person. Um, you can talk with that other driver, decide who wants to lead. Oftentimes, if you're a new driver, it's really helpful for uh, a tenured driver to lead because they know what they're doing. They're more comfortable with it. Um, but you need to know where you're going in case you get separated. So don't depend on that other driver to get you where you're going just because there's two buses. Do your homework, be prepared, and they may cancel one of the buses at the last minute. And you might be that bus that, that has to go by yourself. So you should be as prepared as the other driver is. Okay, it's move one of two. That means they're going someplace and they're coming back from someplace. So this is Valerie Clout, Val. I'm sorry, I should have whited that out, but Val, I apologize for uh, slinging your name out there. Uh, this is your vehicle, bus 204, and this is a school bus, 71 passengers. Now, normally we don't cram 71 passengers. That's just what the bus is rated. If you put three people to a seat, and you can do that with kindergarten, but you know you can't do that with middle school, high school, and most of the grade schools. So 71 passenger is just the rating of the bus. That doesn't mean you're going to have 71 passengers. Okay. This is the next section. So you are on duty at eight o'clock. That means you're going to show up at eight o'clock. You're going to do your pre-trip. You're going to have that bus ready and you're going to be at Chief Charlotte to pick up and leave at 8.45. 
So that gives you some time to do your pre-trip, drive up to Chief Charlotte, and then you're leaving at 8.45. So let's say um, they don't come out till nine o'clock. You're just gonna put the actual time over on this side. Your eight o'clock is gonna be actual. That's the one that you're gonna set. That's when you are on duty. Then you're gonna put nine o'clock because that's the time they came out. You're gonna take them to Traveler's Rest in Lola, Montana, estimating to be there at nine, nine ten. Well, because they didn't come out till nine o'clock, it's gonna be 9.25, 9.30. Put the actual time down there. And then you are off duty at beach transportation at 9.30. Well, they didn't come out at nine o'clock. You're not gonna be back at 9.30. So this tells me that I'm gonna drop them off and then I'm gonna come back to, to the office. I'm not gonna stay with them. I'm coming back to beach transportation. And maybe someone else is gonna pick them up. Um, if you were going to be the one to pick them up, you would have another work order or it would say um, the time to pick them up. But at this point, you are just taking them down there and dropping them off at Traveler's Rest. Then at the bottom is your total time. Okay, the next section is the itinerary. You are going to load the group in front of the school. The driver's gonna drop them and return to get the group at 120. So you are gonna go back and get them. The bus will be full with 54 passengers. Like I said, that 71 passenger is, is not going to reflect the real number of passengers. But here's kind of what you're getting into. Okay, the next section is your starting odometer. You need to fill that out before you leave. Otherwise, it wouldn't be starting, right? When you're done, you're going to put your ending odometer. You're going to put your total miles and your route of travel. You can just put Highway 93. If you're in town, you're just doing something in town, you're going up to the Peace Farm, you're going to uh, Benson's farm for pumpkins, you're uh, just in town, you can just write local, L-O-C-A-L, -L, local, not loco, not crazy, but local. And that just says that you're in town, or you can put in Missoula. Okay, then most of you are not going to use these categories. You're not going to buy a meal, you're not going to buy fuel, not going to buy anything miscellaneous. You're not going to get a cash advance. You shouldn't have any expenses. Okay, so that probably will not pertain to basic field trips. Okay, the bottom section. And this is one that I like to read once in a while, just to remind me of what I'm supposed to do. It says, remember, you are a professional driver. Think about what that means. Think safety at all times and drive at a speed as dictated by the law and the conditions of the road. If you're taking them on a ski trip, um, if you're leaving early in the morning, there might be fog, there might be snow. It's your responsibility to dress appropriately. So we don't want you showing up in grubby old clothes, you need to be just a little bit on your game a little bit. Be well-spoken and well-groomed. It's also your responsibility to keep your bus clean. We don't want these field trip folks getting on a bus that's full of garbage, that's full of dirt, that I means sweep out your bus, pick up the garbage, have it ready to go for a field trip. Fuel the bus if needed. You're not gonna dump the restroom on a school bus. That's uh, for the motor coaches, of course. And promptly turn in all paperwork to the office. So this paperwork doesn't get to stay in your bus for two or three days. It needs to come right in after you're done with the field trip, put it in the basket, get it to the dispatchers. 
remember you are the company you are representing the company if you're helpful enthusiastic and concerned people will be impressed with you and the company you represent be concerned with excellence and treat customers royally and you know sometimes the kids get a little rowdy they're excited uh, we'll talk about discipline um, coming up but do your best to be that polite driver who's who's doing a service for these people. And then at the bottom, I certify that all information contained herein and attached is true and correct in all respects. I have also completed my daily pre-trip and post-trip inspection. I've reported any damage. I've checked the vehicle for sleeping passengers and I've turned in all items on the vehicle. Just kind of nice to read that once in a while and remind you of who you need to be while you're out on these field trips. Okay, student management. Now on your bus route, you know your kids, hopefully you know some names and you can uh, correct them with that name. But when you are on a field trip, these are usually totally different, a totally different group of kids and chaperones or teachers. So you need to keep in mind that all safety rules still apply. If your bus has seat belts, the passengers should be wearing seat belts. <clears throat> Excuse me. So you're going to get up at the beginning of your trip. You're going to say, um welcome to the field trip i hope you have a great time remember we've got some emergency exits on our bus um each of the, the hatches up on top you just push open um, and you can use those as an exit there's four safety windows that you can use as exits and the back door is an exit uh, we do need to wear our seat belts so um Please get your seatbelts on and then you're done. Okay. You don't have to go back and, and uh, stand by and glare at some little kid who's not putting on their seatbelt. You don't need to. Um, it's just not a time to apply uh, discipline. You tell them the rules, you let them know what they need to do, and then you drive the bus. <clears throat> now there should be a supervisor or a um, teacher on the bus and they should be the one who manages the students so if there's something going on on your bus you've got a couple of kids in the back that are standing up and and moving around you just mention to the supervisor who's almost always up in the front um because they're they, they kind of feel like now I'm on vacation. I don't have to be in my classroom, but you can turn around or, or look in your mirror and say, hey, Mrs. So-and-so, Mr. So-and-so, we've got kids standing up in the back of the bus. They need to sit down. So use your supervisor as the disciplinarian. They know the kids. They know how to um, enforce what needs to happen. Now, there are times that we have had field trips where the supervisor was on vacation. They didn't do their job, and we've had drivers that had to pull the bus over in a safe spot, but that is not the norm. The norm is, is that your supervisor is the enforcer. Okay, like I said, if you need to pull over in a safe spot. Okay, finding your way, which is one of the most important parts here. If you don't know where you're going, ask. It's just easier to ask before you wander around the city looking for Chief Charlotte's school and um, you're over on the north side. We get really used to the schools that we go to every day. And you may not know where all the schools are that you need to go to. You may not know where these field trip destinations are. So ask. If you don't know, don't get out in your bus and then look at your your um, paperwork and say, oh, well, I'm not sure what that is. <clears throat> Ask before you go. 
So there's a couple <clears throat> things on your computer. You have um, on your phone, you have GPS, but please don't depend on that GPS to get you there as you're going. Um, I guess what I'm saying is prepare ahead of time. Don't just grab your worksheet and say, oh, well, I'm going to uh, Bill Bailey's uh, breakfast bar, and I'm not sure where that is, but I'll type it in and it'll take me there. Uh, you get in trouble sometimes that way, and, and you can do it, I know, but um, streets and trips, Google Earth are two things that you can look at on your computer. You can look at on your phone, you can do your GPS and kind of look at where things are before you go. But this is, like I said, I stress, it needs to be done before you go, not while you're sitting in the bus getting ready to drive but before you go pick them up. Sometimes it's nice to go take a drive if it's right here in Missoula and go see where you can park that bus and how to get into something. If, if you don't have the access to a, a computer program to help show you, uh, after you get off your bus route, run over there, uh, take a look at it. And then tomorrow, when you've got that trip, you know right where you're going. You're confident. You're, um, you're experienced. So here's just an example of streets and trips. Um, this is Highway 93. You're going to turn on to Highway 12. And this is such an old version that it really doesn't have. It has your turn off here, but it doesn't show much of anything uh, for Traveler's Rest, which is where we're going. Okay, this is Google Earth again. This is Highway 93. You're turning onto Highway 12, and then you've got Traveler's Rest here, and it kind of shows the parking lot, the configuration there. You can zoom up into that. Here's, here's kind of a Quonset hut you can drop at. There's other buildings there now, but kind of gives you a little closer look at where you're going. So let's let's take our little trip. We are at Traveler's Rest here. And this is in Lolo, Montana. Here is your turnoff. Now, as you approach turnoffs, places you're not familiar with, you should slow down, eyeball the situation, How's my turn? Can I make that with the bus? Okay, I've got a gate. Is that going to be wide enough? Are there cars coming? And then make your turn nice and careful. Okay, you're headed down the road into the parking area, into the drop-off space. And you got a sign here. Let's see what the sign says. It says passenger loading and unloading. Well, that sounds like someplace I want to be. There's parking that way, but I'm an RV or a bus, so I'm probably going to go there. But first, I'm going to do my passenger unloading. So I'll proceed. This is what it's looking like. You're going to drop off over here. If it's muddy, you're going to want to drop off by the sidewalk. Normally, there's cars parked out here, kind of on a slant. So you may not be able to drop off there, but this is the drop off area going to pull in carefully. Again, you're looking at, at the overall picture. What is safe? What is not safe? What are the hazards? Okay, so I'm going to pull in here and I'm going to drop off right here. All the kids go that way. This is a little closer look. You have pedestrians coming through here. Again, do you have cars parked here? I can drop the, the kids off right here and the teachers. Okay, then it says exit and bus parking. So that's probably the way I want to go. Not this way to the left. Points that way. And here we go. We came around the corner this way. We're headed this direction. Now, if you were staying, you're going to want to find a safe place to park that you can get out if this whole parking area fills up. You don't want to park. You don't want to pull in here and and kind of park sideways because they might uh, block you in. 
got to pick a place that you can uh, park safely and get out. And we'll talk about parking in a few minutes. But we're not parking, we're just going out. So we're following this road out. Okay, no left turn. We're going to the stop sign. That's going back out. Now, if you were going to go pick them up, you would have to go out to this main road and then come back around. They just don't want you turning in this direction. So you're coming out to the stop sign and you're headed back to Missoula. So let's talk about some hazards that you have on field trips. Anything that's unfamiliar to you could be a hazard. Tight turnarounds where you have to drop and maybe back up, uh, go through traffic, park cars. You have narrow roads. You have places that have no shoulders that are dirt. You have bridges that may not be rated, so you don't know if you can go over them or not. You have underpasses or, or gates that have overhangs. You need to think about, can you go under those? Or uh, how tall is your bus? Is it going to fit? Gates, entrances, are they tight? Can you get through there? Um, if it's snowy, are you going to slide into the side of that gate? If you're backing up through things, um, it, just anything that's hazardous. And then where do you park? Parking lots are one of the most hazardous places that we go. Uh, we ding up more cars. We, we bump into things because it becomes really tight and congested. Okay, so these are just some of the places that are field trips that we go on. We go to a lot of times. So just take a look at these, see if there's places you don't know. McClay Flats out on Big Flat, Rattlesnake Trailheads, of course, up the Rattlesnake, Paddy Canyon, Lubrick, which is up the Blackfoot. Randolph Homestead on the North Hills of Missoula. Fort Missoula, University of Montana. There's lots of different buildings and places we drop there. The music building, um, forestry, university center. Okay, the smoke jumpers out by the airport. Denny Washington's Ranch, which is up Grant Creek. Teller Wildlife Refu Refuge down towards Stevensville, the Bison Range. Camp Make a Dream, which is east of us. Camp Paxson up by Seely Lake. Morell Falls up by Seely Lake. Arlie Fish Hatchery, Kelly Island. There are two accesses to Kelly Island, so make sure you know which one you're going to. Lincoln Hills, there's some trailheads up in there. Sewage Treatment Plant. Um, that's just a real sweet place to go. Currents, splash, two swimming areas, one on each side of town. And then concerts, um, Big Sky Brewing and the Kettle House Amphitheater. Um, we had a lot of trips during the summer, um, spring, summer, and fall to the concerts. So these are just some of the places that we go on a regular basis. Know where you're going, know how to get in there, know how to get out. Okay, turnaround options are not always the best. So this is off of a dirt road. They say, oh yeah, you can turn around right there. Well, with this dark mud, you may want to get out of your bus before you make that turnaround and walk out there, see if it looks good. You make that judgment call. Don't just let your um, tour guide or your teacher tell you, oh yeah, you can just turn around there. It's not a big deal. Well, you might be able to in your car, but your bus weighs a lot more than your car. Walk out there, take a, a second, make sure that there's no obstacles under the grass. This is pretty clear, but make sure that you're not gonna sink down into the mud. That would be my biggest concern right there. Okay, tight turnarounds where you have to do kind of a three-point or a 60-point turn, watch what's behind you. Now, as you're backing up, 
If you back up too far in this position, you might rip that tailpipe off. We've had buses come back from field trips with no bumpers, with crashed in back ends, with tailpipes hanging. Um, when you're backing up, are you gonna hit trees? You've got to take a little extra time. Don't be so overconfident with your driving that when you're on an, in an unfamiliar place, you can just back it up, rip it around, and you're, and you're done. Take some extra time in those unfamiliar places to see what's behind you, what's under you, what's above you. Okay, narrow roads where you have no shoulder, where you have uh, maybe a little borrow pit that you could get down into. Uh, be really careful with the potholes. You may have to slow down on these dirt roads. Take it easy, don't just jar everybody. Don't get over too far. Uh, if you had traffic coming towards you in this instance, you may have to pull over it um, quite a ways and let them pass and not just keep driving. Uh, you don't want to put another car off the side of the road. And you don't want to get yourself down into this soft stuff that's going to mar you down or maybe even tip you on your side. So things to think about on the fly, things to think about on your wheels. Okay, bridges, like I talked about, sometimes bridges are not meant for buses to go over. You weigh 29,000 pounds when you're loaded. That's a lot of tons. It's almost 15 tons. So if there's no rating, it might be best that you don't go over there and you let them walk the rest of the way. Underpasses, gates, things that might hit the top of your bus. You might be able to go under that with just the overhang, but not with the sign. And you're not going to just go slow and push that up. Make good decisions. You have antennas on top of your bus that this sign would might rip off. If and Maybe you could go under this. Maybe it's tall enough, but maybe it's going to hit your antennas also. So if you can go under, think about what's on top of your bus that could be ripped off by something you're touching. Extra careful. Okay, gates and entrances. Uh, this is up the peas farm up the rattlesnake. At one point, they had us going in this little parking lot. Now they've got a parking area outside that the kids can go walk up in there. But at one time, they had us going in through this narrow, tiny, skinny little gate with all these cars and traffic, and we'd had to back out or get a spot where we could pull in and back out just not a safe spot. It would have been much better to drop right here by the entrance and then go up the road and turn around at the cul-de-sac. This is not a safe place to take your bus. Even if they say, well, can you get us a little closer? These are, most of your, your field trips are gonna involve young kids who are very capable of running, jumping, crawling, uh, and, and they can walk an extra 100 feet. Don't put your bus in a position uh, that's dangerous just because you think you want to be a nice guy or gal and get them a little bit closer. Safest spot is don't go in this kind of a mess. Drop on the street. Like I said, they have a parking area out here now. Okay, where to park? So two examples here. This is up at Blue Mountain. Just I took the pictures because they were kind of close to town. This is out at McClay Flats. This is a circular drive around here. But if you pulled in here and you kind of parked over here, people could come and park behind you and in front of you um, parallel parking manner and block you in. So think about where you're going to park to where no one can block you in. Uh, now, you're not going to block them in either. You may while you unload and while you load, but not while you're parking if you're staying there. This little parking area, okay, you might pull in and just park. Well, at three o'clock when you're picking them up, when they come back to your bus, 
This might be full of cars. They might be to the side of you, to the back of you. So park in a manner that you can pull out and not be blocked in. Takes a little bit of thinking. Always go into a parking lot or a parking area thinking that when I come back, this could be full of cars. So I need to park in a place that I'm not going to get blocked in. Okay, parking. Now this is your venue over here. All the cars are parked through here. I would drop my people off and then park way out here where I have access to the exit. Um, I can swing back around and pick them up. Or if this is a grocery store, you drop them by the door and then you go park and wait for them to come to you. Now, when you drop them off, they're all getting off at the same time. If you're at a grocery store, they're not coming out at the same time. Um, they're in there shopping and one, one group's going to be out in about 10 minutes. The next one's going to be 12. The next one's going to be 20. Um, so at a place where you drop the whole group like a grocery store, it's best to take that bus way out here in the boonies, park in a manner that you cannot get blocked in, and then have them come to you. More parking lots. This is the trailhead for the M. This can get really congested. You won't be parking in this parking lot. This is over by the university. Look at the obstacles you have when you're coming out of a parking lot. This is by the university center. You've got this big curb. You've got probably cars parked on both sides of you. You're going to have to swing a little bit wide, avoid the can and the curb and the tree and this tree. Make your turn nice and careful. Go slow. When it is tight, when it's close quarters, you've got to go slow. More parking lots. How are you going to get through this mess with this car parked here? Look things over before you go in. Okay, in conclusion, and I know this was kind of a short, short safety meeting, but there were a lot of really important points. Uh, the biggest point was be prepared. Uh, be prepared before you go. Know where you're going, how you're going to get there. Fill out your paperwork as soon as you get it done. As soon as you get done with the trip, turn it in. Don't hold on to it. Fill it out as you go. Uh, put down when you pick them up. Take that, that 20 seconds to write in the time that you actually have them loaded right before you drive off. Note that time on your sheet. Then when you go to drop them off, check the time, fill that in. And then when you get back to the office, all you have to do is fill in your ending mileage and the time you get back. Keep your paperwork up to, up to date. Use safe practices when backing. Only back when necessary. Get a spotter, um, not, a, not a kid, not a fourth grader, an adult, and then go back with them and let them know the areas that you want them to watch. Oftentimes they'll get focused on you know, that, that sign that's right by the edge of your bus and they'll miss the curb that's below your bus that you just crashed into. But um, let them know what you want them to, to guide you around. Go slow, go careful. Narrow roads can be hazardous, especially this time of year when it's, it's wet, it's spring. We have snow one day, we have rain the next day. Be very aware of your bus height, your bus weight, and its width. Like we've talked about before, that width is important, and you've got to get the back end through those obstacles as well as the front end. In tight spots, drive slower. Use your mirrors more. Get the back end through the obstacle. Parking lots are dangerous. Don't go in those unless you 
absolutely have to and um, make sure that you can get out once you get in. Going down and around corners in parking lots at the end of that parking um, setup uh, may not be possible for a bus. Like I said, this was a little bit shorter than we usually do, but I want to thank you in advance for safely driving on these field trips in those places that are a little more difficult, that are unfamiliar to you. Please use your head, use your driving skills, use your brain, engage that brain, don't get overconfident. Okay, be safe out there. And, you know, field trips are one of the perks of driving a school bus. Um, it's fun to go new places. It's fun to take people places. Um, I've had some really fun field trips with groups, spending the day with them or spending half a day, uh, dropping them off. Have a good time with it. Spring is just around the corner. Um, we are all rooting for it, except those of you who are skiers, snowboarders, I know, but most of us are rooting for spring, and I think it's just around the corner. Field trips are ramping up. Be prepared for those. Sign up on that sign-up sheet, and then drive safely as you go out into that unfamiliar area. Thanks for watching. Make sure you fill out your paperwork. And uh, until next month, uh, have a good day. <laughs>